The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon and Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade, the former editor of Money and George magazines, and the senior or a senior advisor to healthcare.com. Um, he goes out there and he finds stuff that happens, and sometimes stuff comes to him. Hey, Frank, <laughs> what could be going on? What could be going You know, it's so interesting. I, I was going to talk about what we learned this week. Well, <laughs> but I've got now... this little script. <laughs> I've got this little script with a bunch of things we learned. And then the President of the United States and the First Lady test positive, Hope Hicks, the PR person, test positive. Um, and who knows who else is going to be in that White House. So, look, what did we learn this week? You can't thumb your nose at the virus. It'll, it'll come back and bite you. It doesn't respect anything if it doesn't respect you if you don't respect it. So, look, we wish, obviously, the president, the first lady, Hope Hicks, anyone else, uh, we wish them well, a very speedy recovery, mild symptoms. A lot of people don't get very ill. Obviously, as you get older, especially if you're 70 and above, uh, it's a, it's a dangerous uh, situation, and uh, we we can only hope for the best. They've got great doctors down there, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, he and the first lady and the others are getting first class uh, care, and we wish them the speediest of uh, possible recoveries. It's also no time for snark, but we know that's going to happen. Um, Oh, check your check your check your, your Twitter your, feed. I think you've check already. your Twitter feed, and it's going to be full of it. Um, so so be it. Uh, but it's no time for snark. It's it's time to to, to take a step back and think about this uh, virus in a much more serious way. Again, it's still with us; it hasn't gone away. Second wave, first wave. No, there's <laughs> this is just a constant part of our lives, and it's going to be for the next year. So we we. We pray that it hasn't been spread, and we worry. Um, if you caught that debate on Tuesday, and 80 million people uh, did, um, you saw the President of the United States um, spewing uh, in, in every sense of that word. And Biden was on that stage. Now, he was pretty far apart. I mean, they were pretty far apart, um, and, and so was the moderator. So the likelihood that that any of this virus was transmitted uh, during the debate is slim, but boy, we sure pray you know, that uh, it, that didn't happen. So, lessons, okay? COVID-19 is not a hoax. Let that sink in. President of the United States First Lady, others in that White House have the virus. This is not a hoax. It's not a joke. It's something you really need to take very seriously. There are no miracle cures. He's going to get the best care. But, you know, hydroxychloroquine, that kind of nonsense, bleach, that ain't happening. He's getting first class and the first lady getting first class uh, care. So, look, underscore this. Wear your masks. I've got about eight of them now. <laughs> I've got them stuffed in the car. I got them on my desk. I've got them. anybody rings the doorbell. I put it on. Uh, wear your mask and ask others to wear the mask. You, with this very unfortunate piece of news, you now have the license to turn to anyone and say, "Please put your mask on." I'll tell you a story. We go in for a flu shot. This is Carol and I go in for a flu shot. So we call CVS first. Guess what? They don't have a senior shot. Who knows when they're going to have it? It's weeks of delay. Okay. So that's the CVS over at Militon. I didn't feel like driving over to Torrington. Okay. So I've got a local doctor, and I like him. Uh, and I call up, and yeah, sure. Drop by anytime. Come on in. Uh, so we go in, and he's a very pleasant guy, and we get our flu. He gives us our flu shots, and and we and we go out into the uh, driveway, uh, into the parking lot to go home. And Carol said, "Do you realize he was not wearing a mask?" And I got to tell you, Jill, I didn't notice it. I mean, <laughs> I get paid. I'm a reporter. This is my whole life. Okay, I just didn't notice that he wasn't wearing it. Now, 
he stayed away from us in the room, in the examining room. He was on one end and we were on the other. But he gave the shot. He came over and leaned over both of us and gave us the shot. It just didn't register. Okay, you can't let your guard down like that now. You, you really can't. I mean, I've talked to you about, you know, the dry cleaners who are, don't wear a mask and others. That was a couple of weeks ago. Um, here, here's another example. We get invited to a dinner party. Um, and this is just another couple. They've been very, very careful. And you know what? They advertise it as an outdoor barbecue. Okay, great. So outdoor barbecue, that's fine. Nice warm weather. Uh, we go over there, and guess what? There are two other guests. So it's not just them. Now there's two others. And we're outdoor, but we're outdoors with cocktail time. And I thought, okay, we're fine outdoors. We stay, keep our distance. But nobody's wearing a mask. And the host said, no mask, no mask. You don't need any mask here. So we weren't wearing a mask, but we were keeping uh, some distance. And guess what? It evolved into a dinner party inside their house. Now, what do you do at that moment? I mean, do you say, I, I can't do this. I'm sorry. Uh, it's too much of a risk. Uh, good night and leave. Okay. I didn't do it. But if that happened this week, that's exactly what I do. Exactly what I do. I'm sorry. But I'm. we need to take this seriously right now. So how do you get this virus? You get it. You're in danger if you spend 15 minutes, not five minutes, not two minutes, 15 minutes indoors with no mask, close to someone, six feet away from someone, closer than that, with no mask for 15 minutes. That certainly underscores the dinner party. Okay? Okay, but can, just just to interrupt for one second, let's, sure. re, let's repeat the 15. No, because these are basic guardrails that people, you, you know, a lot of people don't have any idea. So that's that's easy. 15 mm -hmm. minutes indoors within six feet of others, no mask. No mask. And talking to each other, obviously, in your, your exchange. Okay, that's okay. a thing. That's dangerous. You know what they're doing in Italy? Italy went, you know, Italy was terrible uh, in, the, in March and April. Um, you know what they're doing in Italy? It's mandatory now. You wear a mask. And especially in many places. It's from 6 p.m. until on uh, until uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mask everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So during the day, you can't go into a shop. You can't that kind of thing. You can walk the streets, but they are, they want you to wear a mask. But and you know what else they're doing? They're getting on the buses. The police get on the bus and make sure everybody's wearing a mask. And if you're not wearing a mask and you're belligerent about it. You can be fined up to 3,000 euros. This is, they're not kidding around there any longer. We should have these kinds of mandatory mask rules all over this country. We should have it as a national policy, but at the very least, it, it should be mandatory um, in states or in cities where, where uh, the political leaders have the power to do that. Okay, so if it's not happening in your area, make your own mandatory mask rule. And, and put those masks on, buy five or six of them. They only cost six or seven bucks each. And wear them. Wear them everywhere. And if you walk into a shop and the person behind the counter is not wearing a mask, you got two choices. You can tell them to put a mask on or her to put the mask on. Or you can even better turn around and walk out and go someplace else with a mask. Now, this is, this is serious here in Connecticut. Okay. What are we looking at right now? We, in the last couple of weeks, the infection rate in Connecticut has doubled to 2%. Now, that's a lot better than 10% or 20% or even 5% where you start to worry about spread. But it doubled in just a couple of weeks. If it doubles again to around 4%, Lamont himself, Governor Lamont himself, said this week that he probably will delay phase three, which is opening up restaurants and allowing gatherings of, of 250 people or something uh, like that. Okay, in this area, in the northwest corner, we actually have zero, the last numbers I looked at, zero hospitalizations. That's very good. Uh, down in Fairfield County, they've got 40, and in the state as a whole, more than 100. And that's the first time since June that we've had more than 100 hospitalizations. What you worry about is the trend line. Colleges, 
schools, fatigue. I don't want distance. I don't want to wear a mask anymore. Oh, gee, it's all sweaty. That kind of thinking uh, and that kind of interaction, young people having parties, is a danger. And you're starting to see it creep up here in Connecticut, not in our corner. Thank God, not in our corner at the moment. We're in New York City, so, you know, Jill, we were, we were down there, uh, just uh, some routine doctor stuff. Um, so I had been in New York City since March. And my first impression was, gee, this is this is pretty good. I mean, just about 80 percent of people walking around on the street wearing masks. Uh, they're keeping their distance, obviously, they're respecting the virus. Um, uh, the, the apartment house we were staying in um, were very careful and they put all the marks on the floor to say six feet apart. No one was getting in the elevator. If you were in, we felt good about that. And we went out to outdoor restaurants. And again, that was fine because they were spread far apart. Um, the waiters were wearing masks and um, it was outdoor. It was, it was a little like Italy. It was interesting because if people came up, the restaurant, they'd go in and grab another table and put it down the block. I mean, this is, they take it over the sidewalks. They take it over the, the first lane of, uh, of, of the road. Uh, so, you know, uh, look, it, it worked. It, was, it, it worked. So come Saturday night, Genius Frank says to Carol, hey, you know that great little restaurant, uh, Bar Pitti down in the village? Let's, I love that restaurant. Let, and it's all outdoors. Let's go. So we go down there. And guess what? It's a, it's the backyard of NYU. Mobs of, you know, I'd say 20 to 25 year old, mobs of them lined up. And they're going to stay there for a long time waiting to get into these restaurants because they're all jammed. It's a beautiful night. We said, we took one look at that. We said, wow, we got to get out of here. So we get into a cab and the cab cabs actually will better for us, we thought, that, than even a lift because those cabs have partitions between the driver and the, and the back seat. You open the windows, you're only in there a couple of minutes. There's very little traffic in New York these days. So we, we didn't think that was any, any danger at all. So we, we go up. I said, you know, let's go to Koreatown because there are lo- restaurants, one after another, just so many of them, there's certainly there'll be uh, one. And you know what? The whole block of the uh, main block in Koreatown is blocked off just for pedestrians. Well, we get up there. It's worse than the village. <laughs> oh, my God. People just young people smoking and drinking on the street, waiting to get into these restaurants for at least an hour, because that's what the waits were. <sighs> Joe, look, what am I trying to say here? You can't be too careful. You can't be. Learn from the Italians. They got creamed. And you know what they said? In a country that, you know, prizes its freedom and they bend the rules and they park sideways on the, on the sidewalk and all the rest of it, if you've ever been there. But you know what? They got creamed and they learned a lesson from it. And political leader after political leader said, you know what? Mandatory mass. And if you don't wear it, the cops are going to come along and it's not going to be a slap on the wrist, not a hundred dollar fine. You're going to get up to 3000 euro fine. Uh, that drives it, that drives it home. And there's wide compliance all over the country. And they've gone from one of the worst countries in the nation to in the world to one of the best. We can, our leadership could do it. And if our leadership does not do it, Impose your own mandatory rules. Don't get this virus. Don't get sick. Don't spread it. You know, take care of yourself and take what the mask is all about is protecting others. Okay. 40, 50% of these cases are asymptomatic. You don't feel it, but you're the most contagious five days before you, you feel the symptoms five days before. OK, so you walking around, you feel OK, but guess what? You might not be. You may have that virus and it may be cooking inside of you. And before you realize it because of a symptom like a cough or others or fever. OK, before you feel it, you are the most contagious five days before you feel it. So wear the mask and protect others. Protect people in your household, protect your grandparents, protect your, your parents, protect and be careful with kids in school. This is another obvious lesson to be learned from this. 
Children don't look something like 10 percent of the cases in this country are children. So children get this virus. Understand that. They don't necessarily have a bad case of it, though hundreds have died. But but that's minor statistically, at least. But they can spread it. They're asymptomatic. They don't they feel OK. But they're coming on home from school and it can be spread. So you've got to be careful, folks. Be careful. And I got to say this with no snark. The president of the United States was not careful and he endangered others. And guess what? Now he has this virus. We wish him well. We wish him well. But we also wish he had taken the virus more seriously. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and senior advisor to healthcare.com. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online, in-store, on my desk.